Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, if I haven't made it clear already in my past videos, I'm a huge, huge DC Comics fanboy. Ever since I was a child, I've always been drawn to the world of DC, with characters like Batman and Superman having shaped a ton of my childhood memories. And my dedication to the DC Comics brand continues to this very day, and is on par with my other obsessions like Star Wars, Godzilla, and most importantly for this video, Fortnite. It should be no surprise that Fortnite, being the crossover media giant that it is, has collaborated with the DC Comics brand numerous times in the seven or so years it has been around. From household names like Batman and Wonder Woman to more niche characters like Bloodsport and Dreamer, DC is one of the most recurring collaborations in Fortnite's history. And yet, despite all this, at the time of me making this video, there hasn't been a single new DC Comics skin added to the game in over a year. This year-long dry spell is all the more confusing when you take into consideration that, up until this point, DC and Fortnite's relationship was running pretty smoothly. The two companies produced, in total, 24 different skins in the span of four years, with hardly any waiting room between each consecutive skin release. And, well, why is that exactly? Well, that's what I aim to find out in this video. I'm going to be cataloging each and every individual DC Comics skin that has ever been added to Fortnite in order to determine when the brand was at its peak and when it eventually fell off. At the end of the video, I'll give my thoughts on why exactly this unbelievable fall off took place and whether or not DC Comics and Fortnite can redeem themselves. But before we begin, I just wanted to let you guys know that I officially nabbed myself a creator code. If you want to support the channel, use the code MAX66 the next time you check out at the item shop. That's M-A-X-X-6-6. I'd genuinely just greatly appreciate it if you did. But with that being said, it's about time we got on with this video. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the rise and fall of DC Comics skins in Fortnite. Now, like any good story, we have to start at the beginning. The first instance of Fortnite collaborating with the DC Comics brand was in September of 2019. Taking place during the events of Chapter 1 Season X, Fortnite players were graced with a whole host of cosmetics based on DC Comics' flagship franchise, Batman. Three skins in total were added to the game on September 19th, 2019. Those being the Batman comic book outfit, the Dark Knight movie outfit, and the Catwoman comic book outfit. As the names of these skins suggest, both Batman and Catwoman take inspiration from their comic book designs, whilst the Dark Knight is based specifically on Batman's appearance in Christopher Nolan's acclaimed The Dark Knight trilogy. Oh, and uh, by the way, I'm going to refer to these skins as Batman, The Dark Knight, and Catwoman respectively, since saying comic book outfit and movie outfit, each and every single time I mention the skins will get pretty annoying pretty quickly. These three skins can be unlocked by purchasing them from the item shop. Catwoman and her accompanying cosmetics can be purchased like any other run-of-the-mill skins, while the Batman and Dark Knight skins and their cosmetics are bundled together in something called the Batman Caped Crusader Pack. I also want to mention that, at the time of these skins being added to the game, a handful of specialized challenges could be completed to earn even more Batman-themed cosmetics. The Welcome to Gotham City challenges could be done to earn a loading screen, glider, banner icon, and spray. I also wanted to briefly mention that this crossover brought with it a bunch of other Batman-themed goodies. Two mythic weapons in the form of the explosive Batarang and Batman's grapnel gun, were available at this time, and the iconic Tilted Towers were turned into Batman's home city of Gotham. Just wanted to briefly mention this stuff because I know if I didn't, someone would probably say something about it in the comments. But back to the topic at hand, what do I think of the three skins that we got? Honestly, Epic Games really put their best foot forward when it came to their first official crossover with DC Comics. The amount of love and detail put into this collaboration truly goes to show that Fortnite crossovers aren't just solely made for the money. I'm going to be like completely honest here and say that this is genuinely, genuinely one of my favorite Batman designs of all time. Like, 
really, it's actually so good. Which is surprising given the fact that it's very obviously a Jonesy remodel. The Dark Knight skin, while I do love it, uh, I don't know. I just don't think it was the appropriate movie-based skin to be added to the game. I feel like either Michael Keaton's or Ben Affleck's Batman would have worked better, as these two Batmen come from universes that are more out there compared to the realistic, grounded approach of the Dark Knight films. And also, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for them to run around with guns and kill people. Yeah, I should briefly mention that it's pretty uncanny to see Batman running around shooting people with guns, as that's like the number one thing he never does. But then again, that complaint can be applied to like 90% of all Fortnite collaborations, so it's whatever. Anyways, the Catwoman skin is nothing special, but I still like it. I do appreciate that she has a style that allows her to have her goggles up. I also appreciate and think it's pretty ingenious on Epic's part to have the first two DC comic characters added to the game be Batman and Catwoman. Like, these two characters are completely inseparable, more so than even Batman and Robin or even Batman and Joker. No matter which interpretation of the Batman mythos you interact with, their love for one another binds them together, something that Epic would go on to utilize in the future when given the chance to write their own original Batman story. But we'll touch on that later in this video. Alright, this section of the video is starting to get a little long, so I'm going to wrap up my thoughts here. Simply put, Epic Games knocked it out of the park when it came to their first official crossover with DC Comics. They utilized the Batman franchise incredibly well, delivering three high quality skins as well as other fun gameplay elements. And it seemed like they were just getting started because only a couple of months later, Epic Games would introduce yet another iconic Batman character to the world of Fortnite. The next DC Comics character to be added to the world of Fortnite came on February 7th, 2020, during Chapter 2, Season 1. That character was none other than the clown princess of crime herself, Harley Quinn. First off, I think it's important to note that Harley Quinn's standard appearance isn't based on her classic red and black look but rather her design from the 2016 Suicide Squad movie. This is because her addition to the game coincided with the release of the Birds of Prey movie, which dropped the same day the skin was added. As such, Harley comes with an additional style that resembles her appearance from said movie. The style, referred to as Always Fantabulous, has to be unlocked by completing the Harley Quinn challenges that come bundled in with the skin. It's also worth noting that Harley's addition to the game brought with her the Harley Hitter pickaxe. And, uh, apparently this thing was, I mean, I don't know if it still is, but apparently this thing was a pretty hot ticket item back in the day. I don't know if it's because it was the first ever baseball bat themed pickaxe to be added to the game or whatever, but I remember people going crazy over it. Anyways, I think Epic did a pretty fantastic job at adapting the character to Fortnite, even if they did have to modify her appearance a bit. I'm definitely more of a fan of her Birds of Prey style, since when I look at her Suicide Squad design, I'm just reminded of the cringy couples in high school that thought Joker x Harley was a mood. Ugh. But yeah, overall, a pretty solid skin. This would be the last DC Comics skin for about 4 months until the brand would inevitably make a splash once more. Chapter 2 Season 3, also known as Splashdown, saw the island flooded as a result of Midas's failed attempt to fight back against the storm. As such, the whole season was themed around, well, water and aquatics. And who better to represent the DC Comics brand around this time than the King of the Seven Seas himself, Aquaman. Released on July 16th, 2020, Aquaman was the first DC Comics character to be added to a battle pass as a bonus skin, and could be unlocked by completing special Aquaman-themed challenges. His appearance is based on Jason Momoa's portrayal of the character from the DCEU, specifically his appearance towards the end of the 2018 Aquaman movie. 
An additional style for the skin could be unlocked and is known as Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman's civilian identity. However, Aquaman wasn't the only DC Comics character to be added around this time. On the same day that the King of Atlantis dropped, his arch nemesis Black Manta was added to the game as well. Black Manta, much like Aquaman, is based on his appearance in the 2018 Aquaman movie. Unlike Aquaman, Black Manta isn't part of the Battle Pass and is instead purchasable from the item shop. And god does he look so good. I've always been a huge fan of Black Manta and his look in the Aquaman movie is probably my favorite look of his of all time. And well this isn't really relevant, but he comes as a jetpack back bling that activates anytime you jump with it. And I think that's really cute, I'm, I'm really happy they made that a thing. Overall, two pretty decent skins. They fit the theme of the season perfectly, and it was pretty cool to see Epic utilizing a DC Comics franchise that wasn't just Batman. And also, these two skins go to show how Fortnite can kind of be used as a sort of time capsule in certain circumstances. Like if you're watching this video, you're probably well aware that the DCEU film universe officially concluded with the release of, coincidentally, Aquaman 2 about a month or two ago. And like, it's it's just so weird seeing these skins in the game, knowing full well that the thing they came from no longer exists. I don't know, I, I just think that's really interesting. I'm ashamed to admit that I still wasn't playing Fortnite at the time Aquaman was added to the game, so I unfortunately missed out on him. Which, you know, really blows since he's the one DC Comics skin I don't have. Just another reason why Epic should start selling Battle Pass skins in the item shop. Another couple of months would pass before the next batch of DC Comics skins would be added to the game. Ironically enough, they'd be added to a season completely dedicated to a rival comic company. I guess you could call that... a sick joke. It, it, it's a pun, because the next character we're going to be looking at is the Joker, and he makes sick jokes. Do, do you guys get it? On August 15th, 2020, just as Chapter 2 Season 3 was drawing to a close, the official Fortnite Twitter account announced that a new limited time offer would be coming to the game. The offer, entitled The Last Laugh Bundle, would see two of Batman's most iconic and most formidable villains being added to the world of Fortnite. Those two villains being Poison Ivy and, more importantly, the Clown Prince of Crime, the Joker. Before we move on, I think it's important to point out that the Last Laugh Bundle wasn't released until a couple of months after its announcement. It took until November 17th for the bundle to start hitting physical store shelves, and it took even longer for it to appear in the item shop, doing so on December 5th. That means that this bundle was originally released during Chapter 2 Season 4, which, if you'll remember, was the Marvel Comics themed season. The fact that a bundle themed around Batman villains was released during a time where Marvel superheroes and supervillains were taking the main stage is just... God, I love this game and its possibilities. Anywho, the Joker and Poison Ivy skins both came with selectable styles. Joker comes with three styles in total. His default appearance, one where he wears a jacket, and one where he wears a jacket and a hat. Poison Ivy comes with two styles, one where she has green skin, and one where she has human skin. I always found it pretty weird that Poison Ivy was one of the Batman villains they decided to include in this bundle. Including the Joker was obvious. He's Batman's arch nemesis and one of the most beloved villains in all of fiction. Poison Ivy, however? Not exactly the first choice that comes to mind when you think Batman villains. At least, not to me. That's not to say I dislike the character because I very much do like her. It's just an odd second choice behind the gesture of genocide. I suspect the reason was because they wanted to complete the Gotham City Sirens trio, seeing as how both Catwoman and Harley Quinn were already in the game. But all in all, there's not much more I can say other than the fact that Epic Games did a fantastic job at adapting these characters to the world of Fortnite. But you know, we're eight characters deep into this video, and besides the very first Batman collaboration, it kind of feels like the DC Comics brand hasn't been more than just a footnote in Fortnite's history. Sure, we got a handful of pretty cool skins, but that's about it. There hasn't been any story significance with the characters added, nor have they ventured that far from the Batman brand specifically, minus the Aquaman skins. Well, thankfully, 
This narrative was about to quickly shift in DC's favor. Chapter 2 Season 5 would mark a triumphant jumping off point for the brand, as multiple DC Comics characters would be added in droves in the following couple of months. But first, one more quick little footnote. As part of January 2021's Fortnite Crew Pack, the superhero Green Arrow was added to the game. Really not much more to say here other than the fact that his design is clearly based on Green Arrow's appearance in the CW Arrow TV show. That and he has a pretty awesome pickaxe. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Moving on. Chapter 2 Season 5 was heavily focused on the theme of bounty hunting, while also featuring a whole host of crossover characters who fit the warrior character archetype. And while he doesn't necessarily fit the typical warrior mold, the Flash is certainly someone you can count on to help solve a multiverse threatening crisis. Barry Allen needs no introduction, given his title says it all. He's the fastest man alive. As such, The Flash was one of the many warriors recruited by Agent John Jones in order to help solve the issue of the Zero Point becoming unstable. During his quest to recruit The Flash, Jones made an audio log recording his thoughts on the Scarlet Speedster. Reality Log 52. Uh, found my latest target, but... I haven't been able to get him to sit still long enough to actually explain what's going on. So, coffee it is cute little place down the block called CC. Oh, 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 he's back. He's back. And he is giving me the one more second through the window. Great. Uh-huh. Okay. You do what you got to do, pal. More like most overbooked man alive. Oh, well, at least I got my good friend Coffee here for me. Isn't that right, Coffee? Ooh. Uh, excuse me, miss. Is that a bear claw? The Flash was officially released to the item shop on February 14th, 2021, but could be unlocked earlier and for free on February 10th for those who won a Flash-themed duos tournament. Yeah, remember when Fortnite had tournaments where you could actually win exclusive skins and cosmetics for free? Epic really should consider bringing those back. The Flash was just the beginning of what would soon turn out to be a complete and total DC Comics Blitzkrieg. In the span of time between the beginning of Chapter 2 Season 6 and the end of Chapter 2 Season 7, a total of 5 DC comic skins will be added to Fortnite. And in one instance, 3 skins will be added in less than 2 weeks time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is officially the peak of DC's relationship with Fortnite. And who better to begin this peak period of time than two of the most iconic members of the Teen Titans. For those of you who are somehow unaware of who these two characters are, Raven is the daughter of a literal demon and, as such, wields dark arcane magic, whilst Beast Boy has the ability to transform into any known animal in the world. The two are often romantically paired with one another, which probably explains why they were chosen for this season specifically. So speaking of which, it seems the Fortnite devs must have been huge Teen Titans fans, since these two characters have gotten some of the most love out of all the DC comic skins thus far. Let's first go over Raven, shall we? One of the first things to note about her is the fact that she's referred to in-game as Rebirth Raven, due to the fact that a Raven skin already existed prior to her inclusion. The Rebirth part of the name is in reference to how in 2016, DC relaunched their main comic continuity and gave it the name DC Rebirth. Raven's Fortnite design is based on how she looked in this comic continuity. She was part of Chapter 2 Season 6's Battle Pass and could be unlocked at level 77. Two additional styles entitled Raven Classic and Rachel Roth could be unlocked by reaching level 85 in the Battle Pass and completing 70 epic quests, respectively. The Raven Classic style is pretty self-explanatory, it's one of the character's older designs. The Rachel Roth style is based on her civilian identity and appearance from Cami Garcia's Teen Titans Raven series. It's also important to note that Raven had a slight role in Chapter 2 Season 6's story, 
Having traveled to the island by accident, and being one of the characters who helped investigate the spires that had sprung up across the map. That about does it for Raven, so let's quickly go over Beast Boy before we move on. Beast Boy was added to the game on May 14th, 2021, as part of the item shop. Though, much like The Flash, he could have been unlocked early and for free by winning a Teen Titans themed tournament that took place on May 12th. Beast Boy, much like Raven, has three styles to choose from. His standard appearance, his Garfield Logan appearance, which puts him in his civilian gear, and finally, his gorilla form. A neat thing about Beast Boy is that he comes with a built-in emote that allows you to change from his human form to his gorilla form whenever you feel like it. I don't really have much more to say about these two, so, you know, I won't. Look, I've got like 10 more characters to go over, so I gotta start cutting corners somewhere. Now, Towards the end of Chapter 2 Season 7, aka Invasion, three unique DC comic skins were added to the game in less than two weeks time. Which, you know, is pretty goddamn insane. If you were a DC fan around this time, you were eating good. Let's get straight into it by going over the first skin to be added in this time frame, Bloodsport. Bloodsport is a highly dangerous mercenary who is most well known for shooting Superman with a bullet made from kryptonite. He was added to the game on August 4th, 2021, to promote the then-upcoming James Gunn film, The Suicide Squad. They even got Bloodsports' actor, Idris Elba, to promote the skin for the game. Hey, Idris Elba here. Bloodsport is coming. Bloodsport is a rather unique item shop purchase, at least compared to other DC Comics skins. He comes with a standard back bling and pickaxe combo, no surprise there. But he also comes bundled with four sprays based on his fellow Suicide Squad members. Harley Quinn, Polka Dot Man, Peacemaker, and King Shark. On top of that, a weapon wrap based on his armor is included, which is so far the only weapon wrap in the game with the DC series rarity. Overall, Bloodsport was a surprise to be sure, but a welcomed one. And he kind of falls into the same category as Aquaman and Black Mana in terms of these skins being representative of a bygone era. He's also representative of how interesting promotional skins in Fortnite can be. Like there's plenty of skins that get added to promote a film or show, but you don't necessarily feel like you're being advertised to because these characters are already well beloved and highly requested. Think Optimus Prime being added to the game to promote Transformers, Rise of the Beasts, or Ahsoka being added to promote the Ahsoka show. But now, look at Bloodsport. Very few people knew who this character was until his inclusion in the Suicide Squad, and even less people were asking for him to be in Fortnite. But because they needed a cool character to promote an upcoming movie, this once D-tier character turned household name is now forever immortalized in Fortnite. Oh, good lord, did I really just go on a rant about promotional skins? This video is already long enough as it is, why am I doing this to myself? Back to the topic at hand, the second character to make their way to the island around this time would be one of the most recognizable superheroes in the world. I'm of course talking about the Man of Steel, Superman. Superman was added to Fortnite on August 10th, 2021, a mere six days after Bloodsport's inclusion. He was the bonus skin found within Chapter 2 Season 7's Battle Pass, and as such, came with a ton of unique cosmetics. First thing to note about the character is that he comes with two styles, his iconic Superman look and his Clark Kent civilian identity. Another cool thing about the Superman skin is that it came with an unlockable color palette that would transform the character's trademark red and blue suit to black and silver. While this style is meant to reference the Fortnite original Shadow series, it also serves as a reference to Superman's recovery suit. A design that gained a lot of popularity recently, due to it being featured in Zack Schneider's Justice League. Superman is also unique in the sense that he's so far the only skin in the game to have a different skydiving animation. This is such a cool little detail that really sells the character, and I wish Epic would do something like this with other skins. Though speaking of really selling the character, some of the quests you had to complete in order to unlock Superman were just... Perfect. Like, in order to actually unlock the Superman style, you had to use a phone booth as Clark Kent. A clear reference to the fact that phone booths are a commonplace used by the character in order to transform into his secret identity. 
And my personal favorite quest was the one where you had to fly through rings using the Superman skin. An obvious reference to the game Superman 64. Like the fact that Superman 64 was referenced in Fortnite? Just makes my heart smile. The third and final DC character to be added during this Chapter 2 Season 7 time period was Wonder Woman. She was added to the item shop on August 20th, 2021, but much like the Flash and Beast Boy, she could have been unlocked earlier by scoring high in a tournament that took place on August 18th. Wonder Woman comes with two styles, one based on the character's trademark red, blue, and gold attire, and a more armored look based on her design from the 2011 New 52 continuity. Wonder Woman came with some pretty sick cosmetics, with my three favorites being her Golden Eco Wings glider, her built-in bracelets of a, ha a face... Oh my god. Ha face sus. And the DC Trinity loading screen. Not much more to say about Wonder Woman, other than she's a really great inclusion, and it was awesome to finally see the DC Trinity in a big piece of media again. And that officially does it for all three of the skins added around the time of Chapter 2 Season 7. But it's not the end of DC's peak in Fortnite. For you see, this whole time, I haven't been entirely truthful with you guys. When I said that a total of five skins were added in between Chapter 2 Season 6 and Season 7, I purposely neglected to mention that, in reality, six additional skins were also added around this time, totaling 11 skins in the span of seven months. These six skins were all part of Fortnite's biggest collaboration with DC Comics to date, a collaboration that would transcend the game itself and cross over into the world of physical literature. Batman Fortnite Zero Point was a comic book series released on April 20th, 2021 that told the tale of how the Dark Knight became trapped in the world of Fortnite, his efforts to escape its seemingly never-ending loop, and his quest to return home to Gotham City. The series ran for six issues until its conclusion on July 6th, but it also managed to get a brief follow-up in the form of the one-shot comic Batman Fortnite Foundation, which was released later that year on October 26th. I made a whole video going over the story this comic series told, how said story contributed heavily to Fortnite's lore, as well as speculating what happened to one of its main villains. The first DC skin to come out of this collaboration was a brand new Harley Quinn skin, known as Rebirth Harley Quinn. Rebirth Harley was released on April 20th, 2021, the same day the first issue of Batman Fortnite Zero Point dropped. This was because every issue of the comic series included a redeemable code, that would net you special Batman-themed cosmetics, and in this instance, Harley was the reward. The skin would eventually hit the item shop later that June, but I still think this was a really awesome way to get more people to read the series. Rebirth Harley Quinn, much like Rebirth Raven, takes design inspirations from her DC Rebirth look, down to the cotton candy colored ends of her pigtails. An additional style for the skin was released around the same time Bloodsport was added to the game, making her pigtails red and black. I think this was their attempt to have the skin more closely resemble Harley's appearance at the beginning of the Suicide Squad movie, as I'm not sure why else they would update the skin at this specific point in time. If I had to pick between this Harley skin and the original Harley skin we got all the way back in Chapter 1, I'd definitely pick Rebirth Harley. I'm way more of a fan of the classic red and black look, not to mention she absolutely slays in those shorts. The next batch of skins to be released as part of this comic series were known as the Zero skins, and included Batman Zero, Catwoman Zero, and Deathstroke Zero. These skins were created specifically for this comic run, and, as such, feature the characters in battle-damaged attire that looks like it was scrounged up from various different sources. Batman Zero, Catwoman Zero, and Deathstroke Zero were released to the item shop on May 5th, May 19th, and June 2nd, 2021, respectively. Deathstroke Zero, like many of the DC skins that came before him, could be unlocked early on May 27th for ranking high in a special Deathstroke-themed tournament. The second to last skin to be added as a result of this collaboration was known as Armored Batman Zero. 
As you can clearly tell, this skin is a more beefed up version of the Batman Zero skin, with the design taking inspiration from past armored Batman designs. The official lore reasoning behind the skin is that he's the snapshot of Batman that was created when the character escaped the loop. Armored Batman Zero was officially added to the game on July 6, 2021, and could be unlocked if you redeemed all six of the codes that came with the comics. A uh, fun fact before we continue, this skin was originally supposed to be released during Chapter 2 Season 5, and would have been one of the characters recruited by Agent Jones to help stop the Zero Point from collapsing. This is probably why the Agent Jones skin is wearing one of Batman's fins in his Jump 42 and Jump 88 styles. And finally, the last skin to come out of the saga was the Batman Who Laughs. For those unaware, the Batman Who Laughs is a multiverse variant of the Dark Knight who mutated into the Joker. It's revealed at the end of Batman Fortnite Zero Point that he was basically the mastermind behind why Batman ended up on the island in the first place. And he later fought Batman and the Foundation in an attempt to reach the Zero Point. Again, if you want to learn more about this character and his contributions to the Fortnite lore, go watch that video I mentioned at the beginning of this section. The Batman Who Laughs, much like Rebirth Harley Quinn and Armored Batman Zero, could be unlocked by redeeming a code that came with the Batman Fortnite Foundation comic. This is... such a weird addition to the game. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I love the fact that the Batman Who Laughs is here, but that doesn't make his inclusion any less strange. I say this because at the point of time this character was added, he had already been killed off in the main DC Comics canon, and was greatly disliked by the community due to him basically being a Mary Sue, as well as him just overstaying his welcome. And it's also weird that out of all the iconic Batman villains they could have picked, like Scarecrow or Mr. Freeze or the Riddler, they decide to go with the Batman who laughs. Just really odd stuff, you know? But with that being said, we are officially done with the Batman Fortnite Zero Point skins. And subsequently, this marks the end of DC's peak in Fortnite. After October 26, 2021, which was when the Batman Who Laughs was added, we would have to wait until September 2nd, 2022, nearly an entire year before the next batch of DC comic skins would arrive to the game. Only three skins in total would end up being added in the year 2022, which is a damn far cry from the 13 skins that were added the previous year. Not to mention, well, as you'll soon see, it was pretty evident that DC and Fortnite weren't exactly bringing their A game when it came to the characters they ended up going with. Chapter 3 Season 3, Fibon, gave us the first of the three skins I previously mentioned, in the form of the Teen Titans character, Starfire. A princess from a distant alien world, Starfire is a happy-go-lucky, cheerful spirit who's quick to not only make new friends, but defend said friends from those that would wish them harm. Released to the item shop on the aforementioned September 2nd, 2022, Starfire notably came with a reactive style that made her hair glow, as well as an emote where she demonstrates her superpowers. Starfire's bubbly personality and carefree nature made her the perfect choice for Chapter 3 Season 3, given its themes of partying and having a good time. Not to mention, it was pretty awesome to see another member of the Teen Titans added to the game. You know, maybe I was being a little bit too cynical earlier when I said that DC wasn't going to bring their A-game. After all, this is a pretty solid character to bring to the game. She's pretty recognizable even amongst non-comic fans due to her appearance in the Teen Titans TV shows. And again, she fit the theme of the season she was added in pretty well. Here's hoping that the next DC character added continues this positive trend. Rainbow Royale is a seasonal event that often occurs in the late summer to early fall seasons, and was introduced to Fortnite in 2021. The event is dedicated to the celebration of the LGBTQ community, and, as such, will often introduce skins and other cosmetic items meant to honor said community members. Now, you guys are probably saying to yourselves, Max, 
This is cool and all, but what exactly does this have to do with DC Comics? Well, as part of Rainbow Royale 2022, DC teamed up with Fortnite once again to bring us a brand new skin to celebrate the occasion. Nia Now, aka Dreamer, is a transgender superhero that was originally created for the Arrowverse TV series, Supergirl, and was added to the game on September 10th, a mere week after Starfire was added. Dreamer's addition to the game marked a first for Fortnite, that being that she was the first official transgender character to be added to the game. I know a lot of people have their own personal headcanons about characters like Meowskos and Twin being transgender, but make no mistake, Dreamer is 100% confirmed trans. And that's f***ing awesome. Admittedly, I think I would have preferred it if they went with a more well-known LGBTQ plus DC Comics character, like Batwoman or John Kent. But regardless of how I feel, Dreamer is an awesome addition to the game. She might be a niche character even in her home series, but the fact that a 100% confirmed trans character was featured in arguably the biggest game on the planet is really awesome. Man, I... <sighs> I don't really know why I was being so dramatic earlier when I said that DC and Fortnite weren't bringing their A game. We're two skins deep into DC's big return to Fortnite in over a year, and they've knocked it out of the park both times. Hell, I'm feeling really optimistic now. What's the third and final skin? Oh, god damn it. Ugh. Black Adam was the third and final DC Comics character to be added to Fortnite in 2022. Released to the item shop on October 21st, Black Adam was added to promote the movie of the same name, which starred Dwayne The Rock Johnson as the titular anti-hero. Black Adam has a reactive style and also came with an additional appearance that drapes him in a cloak. I think Black Adam is super macho cool. And if it were up to me, he'd be the only skin you could use in Fortnite. Okay, 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 enough of that voice. Look, what more do you want me to say about this skin? It's the DCEU Black Adam, an embarrassing adaptation of the character pushed by The Rock to be on par with the likes of f***ing Superman. Like seriously, the only positive thing I can say about this skin is that it came bundled with a pretty goddamn awesome emote. The Test Throne emote is pretty sick and combos surprisingly well with a lot of my favorite skins. Man, you know you really screwed up when an emote is more interesting than your character skin. But you want to know the absolute worst thing about this skin? At the time of me making this video, this was the very last DC Comics character to be added to Fortnite. Not just in the year 2022, but to this very day. It's been over a year since the skin dropped, and we seriously haven't seen a single brand new DC Comics character added to the game since. And no, I don't include Eminem. I don't know if this makes me sound entitled or not, but to go from 13 skins in a year to only 3 the next, and then none the following year, is a fall off of huge proportions. What the hell happened here? In order for us to get to the bottom of why there hasn't been any new DC Comics skins in recent times, we briefly have to look back to 2022. I remember seeing people speculate that the reason why we weren't getting any new DC Comics skins was because of the upcoming free-to-play game, Multiverses. Yeah, remember that game? It was like Super Smash Bros, but was Warner Bros properties. I guess people figured that because this game is a big crossover between different Warner Brothers IPs, including the DC Comics brand, that they didn't want a third-party entity like Fortnite cutting into their potential revenue stream. This claim was backed up by a 4chan leaker, which, yeah, I, I, I know, that doesn't sound very credible, but in all fairness, they did successfully leak that Luke, Leia, and Han from Star Wars were going to be added to the game. So, at least at the time, this rumor had some legs to stand on. I say at the time, however, because in hindsight, there's two huge issues with this theory. First off, Multiverses, or at least its open beta, was shut down in June of 2023. You literally can't play the damn game anymore, and it has yet to make a proper return as of the time of me making this video. Adding on to this, 
While we may not have gotten any new DC skins since the release of Black Adam, most of the DC skins have returned to the item shop on multiple different occasions, such as when Warner Brothers was promoting the Flash movie. So, we know now that Warner Brothers isn't stupid enough to gatekeep their properties out of Fortnite, but that still doesn't explain why we haven't gotten any new DC characters in Fortnite in over a year. And, well, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, there isn't a definitive explanation. I'm no Fortnite insider, but even if I was, I can say with a high degree of certainty that the answer just isn't known in any sort of capacity. The only thing I can offer you is what I personally think is going on. And what I think is this. The reason why we haven't gotten any new DC comic skins in Fortnite in over a year is because of what's going on with the film side of the DC brand. I mentioned earlier in this video that the main DC film universe, the DC Extended Universe, or DCEU for short, recently came to a close with the release of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. This decision came as a result of James Gunn and Peter Safran becoming the heads of DC Studios in November of 2022, where they would then announce in January of 2023 their decision to end the main DC film canon and create a brand new one. The reason I mention this is because despite this announcement of a brand new cinematic universe, Warner Brothers and DC Studios still had four films in total to release in 2023. And unfortunately for them, all four of these films either bombed spectacularly or, at best, underperformed. And a pretty big reason for these films failing as hard as they did has to do with the fact that they simply weren't marketed properly. Seriously, besides The Flash, which I would argue was over-marketed, Shazam 2, Blue Beetle, and Aquaman 2 had piss-poor marketing. Now, look. In my opinion, there are two reasons for this. The first reason lies with James Gunn and Peter Safran's new DC Film Universe announcement. The announcement probably led a lot of people to think that since these four films won't be followed up on in the end, then there's really no reason to see them. If people aren't interested in seeing these films, then Warner Brothers has less incentive to waste more money on advertising them. In their minds, they'd be better off just taking the L. I don't think these two are entirely to blame, and in all honesty, I could be entirely wrong here. After all, I'm just speculating, but I do think that it was important to point that out. The second reason probably has to do with the fact that Warner Brothers is, to put it bluntly, billions of dollars in debt. Like seriously, I think there's somewhere between 40 to 50 billion dollars in debt. This is the reason why He Who Shall Not Be Named ended up canceling movies like Batgirl and that one Scooby-Doo movie. Simply put, Warner Brothers didn't have the money to properly advertise the last four DCEU films, because all the resources either weren't there or were being used to promote successful movies like Barbie or Wonka. Now, you guys are probably asking yourselves, Dude, what the f*** are you talking about? What does this have to do with the lack of any new DC skins in Fortnite? And to that I say... Everything. All of you are aware by now that Fortnite is an advertising machine. Oh, I'd venture a guess that most of the crossover skins we get are promoting another piece of media entirely. We've literally seen examples of this happening in this very video, such as with Bloodsport promoting the Suicide Squad and Black Adam promoting garbage. And yet, despite the advertising power of Fortnite, Warner Brothers made no attempt to advertise any of their last four DCEU movies in Fortnite, because they either didn't have the money to do so, or didn't think it was a financially smart decision to make. Look, say what you will about these four films, but I still think they all could have led to some pretty awesome promotional skins. Blue Beetle is the first that comes to mind, as there's so much you could do with him. You could have his pincers be his pickaxe, the bug ship as his glider, an emote where he transforms from his suit form to his civilian form, etc. We could have gotten a new non-Battle Pass exclusive Aquaman skin in the form of his stealth suit. We could have had Shazam, if nothing else than to have a piece of media where he actually fought against Black Adam. The Flash? Uh, Supergirl would have been cool.
So, is that it? Is this officially the end of DC's presence in Fortnite? Well, despite that huge rant I just went on, no, I don't think it is. I think that both Epic Games and Warner Brothers are simply biding their time before they work together again. From what I've seen and heard, a couple of DC properties and characters were on the most recent Fortnite player survey. So, if nothing else, Epic is at least aware of the fact that people are calling for the DC brand to return. In return it should, as there are a ton of iconic DC characters that deserve to be in Fortnite. From more members of the Justice League, the rest of the Teen Titans, more Suicide Squad members, Batman villains, Superman villains, Lanterns, the list goes on and on. Perhaps the two companies are simply waiting for the new DC film universe to kick off before working together again. I hope that's not the case since the universe is set to begin in 2025, but perhaps this is one of those good things come to people who wait scenarios. But with that being said, we can finally, finally bring this video to a close. If uh, anyone is still here, I just want to thank you so, so much for watching to the end. This is the first video I've ever made that was this freaking long in length. So I apologize if it wasn't really up to snuff like other long videos are or if it was really boring or whatever. I'm really passionate about the DC Comics brand and their inclusion in Fortnite and I clearly had a lot to say about the subject matter and uh, hopefully you guys found some enjoyment in that. Uh, if you did and want to see more Fortnite and crossover related content in the future, go ahead and leave a like, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell, and uh, also follow me on Twitter. If you guys would like to financially support me in any way, uh, use my creator code on screen and in the description. Uh, I need to go now because I'm going insane, so uh, I guess until next time, I'll see you in the next one.